you sick of being outplayed and outskilled? Are you ready to become an imposter? A suspicious Kimberly player? You've come to the right place because I've got some more suspicious Among Us tech for the crayon eaters. Let's go! Alright, I'm sorry. I'll never do that again. But anyway, I got more tech. I got more bullshit that Kimberly has so you can outskill people with tech that they've never seen before and then claim that they need to have better defense. So, welcome back. Now, one thing to say before I start today. Um, this video is sponsored by me. I need some more subscribers and some more watch time before I can get ads on YouTube and before I can get channel memberships and all that stuff. So I would just really appreciate it if you would hit subscribe and share videos with other Kimberly players or any other Street Fighter players that you know that might be interested in my content. I'm trying to make a bit of money off of this so I can put more time. So I would just really appreciate if you could do that for me. But anyways, here's some fucked up stuff. So, with um, Kimberly's target combo, get this really advantageous knockdown if you don't end the target combo in the last hit with the kick follow-up. So if you end it with the kick follow-up, you're only plus 26 afterwards, but if you just let it go with this launcher, you're plus 47. And as you can see, this kick follow-up doesn't add that much more damage. It's like 400 more damage. So if you can like squeak out like a, a nasty little reset out of that extra damage, then it's kind of worth it. So this is one thing that I like to do. It's kind of difficult sometimes, but I think it's worth it. So this plus 47 advantage is pretty much enough to like get like a even better than a safe jump. I believe safe jumps are 43 frames. So if you're plus 43, you have a safe jump. This is even more advantageous than a safe jump. So let me just show you the situation. I land and I'm still plus two. So I'm not quite in range to do a button, but neither are they. So you could get like a medium out just by like jumping after that. But where this uh, setup really gets weird is when you do Hatsu. So like the spacing after target combo here you're sort of far away and you're not like quite in range to jab and you're like visibly like still plus like you land before they do so a lot of people will try and stuff you trying to walk up and take your turn back because they'll realize like oh he just jumped forward he probably fucked up his setup or something so i find a lot of the times even like professional level players will wake up with a crouch medium kick or like a crouch medium punch trying to stuff you from walking forwards and like throwing them or jabbing them because you're just out of range they'll recognize that situation lightning fast and they'll throw it a button but uh it really catches people off guard to throw out a last second tatsu here and it'll pretty much whiff punish anything they try and do this hits uh mediums it hits crush medium punches crush medium kicks i've had it hit jabs before it really depends on the character i haven't tested everything it depends on the height a lot too because you can do this really low to the ground or really high like that so just be wary and one more interesting thing about this setup is that if i just get him to block i'm still plus after and this will hit crouchers as well so normally um tiger knee tattoo will whip on crouchers but since this is like the last hit of the air tattoo it will hit crouchers which is not an overhead but you'll often be left plus afterwards. So this setup, it's pretty much like a, um, sort of like a spacing trap with like low crush instead of like spacing. Um, one thing this setup does lose to is people like particularly looking out for it and calling it out with like light punch or DP. Actually there, it just straight up beat the light punch, but I've seen it lose to a uh, light punch before like a standing light punch, which is like not something people often wake up with, like a standing light punch, because usually their their fastest button is a crouching button. So um, it depends on their habits. This does work on a lot of people and is often people will just not try and challenge it at all at worst. And then you're still plus anyways. Um, I've had, I don't think I've had anyone try and DP this because it, it looks similar to a safe jump enough. You gain the just call out the uh, light punch as well. 
you just go for meaty instead since you're still plus two even if you do an empty jump so i think this um is real enough of a setup for me to use it and it's unfamiliar enough for me to recommend it as a knowledge check and this also works as a can setup yeah so the thing with this setup is it's not exactly real but it doesn't exactly have to be real you know like the more options you have regardless of like how real or fake or whatever they are it doesn't really matter as long as you're cycling their options and putting people in unfamiliar situations i think that's where kimberly shines best so basically if you do the standard can setup you do the jump at the last second and do the tatsu at the last second um the tatsu will juggle into the um <clears throat> into the can and um this actually does hit people quite often because what they do is they'll see you jump and they'll try and tech a throw after an empty jump they don't expect the tatsu and the tatsu hits them while they're throw teching so i would just keep this in mind because it's also plus afterwards and you can get a combo on hit so it's just an interesting little setup not something that you like should go for all the time but like throw it out there like once a set just like to knowledge check them a little bit and another interesting thing with this target combo is that the plus 43 allows you to dash up and get a even on block overhead it's not quite like fully meaty but it's meaty enough to get it to be even on block and you can get like a sort of meaty slide here as well after a dash you can slide plus three on block that's not bad at all you will get a combo on hit here as well and you can dash overhead as well there's only three frame gaps so they can't mash on this so you could go low you could go high you can go even on block that can like swing a situation in your favor if they mash like a the wrong button or whatever expecting it to be minus three and Another knockdown that's uh, minus or plus 47 is a target combo to slide knockdown. So you can get the same thing here as well. You can get a dash slide or a dash overhead. Sorry, I messed it up. Even on block. And you can get the overhead and you can get the low. You can also get like an empty dry rush into a throw. So um, yeah, this setup's like if you're just going for like this kind of oki like you gotta mix it up you can't just do two dashes and then like throw them or whatever like you might as well make the most of it like implement your high lows mid screen and get people to like force to make a decision like are am i gonna parry am i gonna block high am i gonna block low am i gonna dp because those will all on average be more damaged than you just standing here with no real mix so anytime you land a target combo anytime you run the target combo the slide i want you to be implementing mix and you know what mixes even better than target combo and target combo to slide? Target combo into run kick. So this is a plus 30 knockdown. So the other one was plus, um, I believe, 47. Kimberly's dash is 18 frames. So that's essentially a, um, a plus 29 setup. So plus 30 is one more frame more than plus uh 29 so um the previous knockdowns minus a dash so this is actually one frame more advantageous sort of because you're you're left closer so if you land this knockdown that even on block run overhead turns into a plus one on block run overhead so you can represent this option to get the even on block overhead. You can have them like play out the situation of like trading jabs or whatever and make them think that it's only even on block. And then you can go for this setup instead and get a counter hit because you're plus one. And in general, I also just like going for this knockdown hit. just like uh, as a standard thing because it does a bit more damage than run slide does about 225 more damage and i like the corner carry more as well
I never go for run slide anymore. It used to be my bread and butter. Now I go for run kick. I recommend the same thing to you. Obviously this only works from target combo. So if you're like hit confirming a medium kick or whatever, um, this isn't even gonna combo, so don't bother. But if you're going into this target combo, I would recommend mid screen, you go for run kick. So you get the same sort of situation for um, the overhead and the your slide as well. So this will be even more meaty than before. You're plus four instead of plus three. And this will have a two frame gap instead of a three frame gap, which doesn't really affect anything, but could slightly change people's perfect parry times or whatever. And also this, um, you can do drive rush with, with jab and you're still plus six in their face. So you can throw them as well. They're just trying to parry the highs and the lows. So honestly, this is just like a great way to like keep your mix going mid screen. Like even if you just do this and they block it, you're, you're still plus one and like you, you can jab pressure them and whatever and like go for kick throw. And honestly, it just like, this really like changed my game with Kimberly when I realized that I could like keep mixing people from mid screen. And I think this is one of her bigger strengths. Like if you just get one target combo hit and then you guess right once, they're already in the corner and you're running your mix, your your game plan's going good. So this is one of the biggest things that I think you should implement in your game plan. Get these, um, these overhead setups from target combo and uh, run kick and whatever random slide you get from target combo. And it will exponentially increase your win rate. One thing of note with this setup is for whatever reason, this overhead is only even on block in the corner. I'm not quite sure why. And honestly, I'm a little bit too lazy to go into it. But um, yeah, don't, don't go for the overhead expecting it to be plus one. In the corner, it's not plus. It's just even. I don't know why. So this is um, something that I find is like quite a bit overlooked by a bunch of Kimberly players. Um, so punish counters are like a, a mechanic that I feel like aren't isn't totally optimized yet in this game. So you do get unique combos from um, punish counters because the extra plus frames will allow you to um, link different special moves. So one of the big ones is Dan Light Kick into Medium Punch Vagabond. So if, if you're like going for whip punish anyways, instead of buffering into light punch vagabond or DP or whatever would like normally punish, um, go into um, medium punch if you're confident that you'll get a whip punish out. Just to squeeze out that little bit of extra damage and consistency, because this has a bit more range than the light punch variant and you get a knockdown after instead of just plus frames. So this is a good thing to keep aware of and try and implement in your gameplay. Also, what the fuck is this sweep? Why is this shit impossible to whip punch? It's got the worst animation ever. His foot is way shorter than the actual hitbox. This game sucks. Anyway, you can also get this off of stand medium kick. So it's stand medium kick. You can juggle or you can uh, combo heavy punch elbow instead of medium punch elbow like normal. And this actually goes like a long way to increasing your damage compared to the medium variant so as you can see for like one bar i got 600 damage more that's like pretty big for uh whiff punish you also get like a much better corner carry and knockdown off of that so this is definitely something very important to keep in mind your medium punches as well all right there we go they will also combo into heavy elbow So just to squeeze out that extra bit of damage from your whip punishes, you should keep this in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're doing a perfect parry, you also get a punch counter. So just be aware of that. 
because you can get much bigger combos from your perfect parries as well, if you're aware of this. Like, you'll often see me do something like this, just for a corner carry. Because, um... Because the scaling is so bad that oftentimes it's worth it to go into heavy elbow one way or another to get corner carry rather than damage. You can also go into heavy punch and a drive impact to get guaranteed meter damage. So... You see there, the punish counter takes one bar away and the drive impact takes another. So if you perfect parry something and your opponent has only two meters left, this is a great option to burn them out instantly. And I've got one more slightly nasty reset. Anytime you might land an EX air grab. So I will admit that I'm actually not that great at performing the setup, but pretty much you get an air grab, you do heavy kick in, in midair, and you're left at plus 30. And if there is space to squeeze behind them, then you can drive rush and end up on the other side. And if you time this well enough, I believe you are still at meaty timing. So you can keep your pressure and end up on the other side. You can stay same side. You can go to the other side. You can get a meaty drive rush overhead, which leaves you plus eight afterwards. Get a meaty drive rush overhead as well. So if they're just hard committing to one kind of block or another, you can hit them high or low. You can also get a drive rush medium kick here. Which leaves you plus nine afterwards, which is enough to get a stand heavy punch and go into heavy elbow afterwards for big damage. You can always just throw them as well if they're trying to parry everything. So this is pretty real of a mix up in all honesty. Um, it's somewhat niche because you do need to land an EX air grab, but you can land that off of like a stray can hit if um, like you, you use them in neutral like I do. You can use it off of like an anterior air grab, which doesn't happen very often, but it definitely happens on occasion. Something like this. Um, if you happen to land like a random run light kick like this, and then juggle it air grab after. But actually the um, most common way I think that you would realistically land this is on a silver rank random ass um, Honda player who knows how to charge downwards and then charge upwards or a sim player that is teleporting like a madman or something like that. Because the, the free juggle state will allow you to combo a air grab. Something like that. And um, this knockdown is also sort of just um, a general thing off of like any reset. So if I land um, a EX run in the corner and I get that wall splat, I will very, very often go for this sort of reset with the slide or the overhead or the throw, just because it forces them to make a twitch reaction or parry. So if I don't have a can, I find this to be the most effective reset I can do. So after this wall splat, you can get the same, same proto situation. You can get the slide or you can go low. You can go high. And you can throw as well. So you don't get the, the cross under there, but it's still a fat mix up. So honestly, it, this is pretty much just all the ways in this video that you can land different meaty overheads, different meaty lows, whatever, force people to make a reaction. And I actually find that um, the slide is like very effective because a lot of people, they're not actually reacting to overheads. So when they see someone dry rush at them, like a meaty setup or whatever, 
what people will often do is they'll either they'll option select block low and then block high but since there's so much delay since this is so plus like i'm plus 30 so people will they will option select like low block like before they are even like uh up yet so within those 30 frames they'll be option selecting a low block and then by the time that the attack actually hits them they'll be high blocking a lot of the time so the slide will just catch people who have that habit because they expect it to stick around a lot sooner than they do as you can see the uh the heavy kick sort of props them up in the air a little bit so people expect to be hitting the ground a lot sooner than they actually do so this slide hitting people this late will hit a lot of people off guard when they're trying to block overheads and another thing I see people do is they'll just parry every time because they're like, oh, I'm in a mix up. And that's when throw gets really good because even just since they're in the corner, you get throw loops afterwards. Very funny game, very epic game. You know what? I had another tech plan for this video, but then I actually did it for the video in real time. And then in real time, there's like 10 minutes in that recording that I just did of me doing the routes and finding out that my tech actually is worse than doing something else so um we don't talk about that um i'm definitely a top kimberly player definitely so i'm gonna show you something else so in my last kimberly tech video i showed that after um target combo into medium punch vagabond you get a meaty crutch medium kick so it's plus six and there's actually another way to get this uh set up so after you do heavy DP, which happens quite often, just from like light. I think a lot of people know that you can get an overhead to frame trap here, but you can actually get a meaty low here as well. So I didn't actually know this myself until I saw it in True Tech's video. I'll link him in the description. And um, pretty much all you do is you, after a heavy tattoo, you are plus 21. Um, crouch jab whiffs in 13 frames and crouch medium kick is 7 frame startup. So all you have to do is you whiff a crouch, crouch light punch and the um, the medium kick will auto time. So this is actually very easy and very effective and incredibly practical. If I could actually hit it, that is. So there, you can get crouch medium punch or um, target combo. Target combo does more damage though. Um, and also, I didn't mention this in the recording either. The next tech I got um desner did it desner did the whole taunt thing so his links are also in the description go subscribe to him anyway and um this um this last tech is uh the most um definitely like a very optimal tech very uh powerful um definitely um one of the uh, better techs on this list um i use this in every tournament i've ever played and I'm actually gonna have to go into versus mode for this. I won't be able to do this. Crap, I might have to plug in second control. Hold up. So this is um, some very optimal stun combo. So for the optimal results here, you want to be in the level three install. And the reason for that is um, with the level three install, normally your taunt only lasts a few seconds. But with the level three install, you get this taunt where uh, Kimberly hits the, the the jiggy with it. She gets um, she hits the Fortnite dance, and this taunt actually lasts quite a long time. So hopefully, I hit this on the first try. But essentially, if you're taunting at the end of the round, your taunt will play to completion before the game actually like um says like the who won screen. So your opponent has to watch the entirety of your taunt before they get to exit out of the game so say your opponent is around this amount of health you just drive impacted them and they got stunned in the corner you have level three you have your cans Fuck. all right um that totally didn't happen you guys didn't see anything but anyways you get if you land a stun combo you do cans a medium punch into EX slide, the EX slide will prop them up, leaving you with just enough time to get a taunt off before the cans explode, which leaves you with like 10 seconds of glorious taunt animation. Fuck. Fuck. Um, I might have lied about the whole uh, tournament optimal thing. 
because uh, I'm pretty sure no one has ever landed this before. But I aspire to be the first one to do it, goddamn. Let's go! So as you can see, your opponent's gotta watch as Kimberly hits the, the spiggy on them. He hits the, the Fortnite dance. And they gotta watch the entire animation before the windscreen pops up. So if you're playing in tournament, if you're in a ranked match, and your opponent's playing Honda, your opponent's playing JP, and they just lost to Kimberly, low tier, honest Kimberly, gotta hit this setup on them. It's optimal. They gotta hold that for the rest of their lives, that you hit the Spiggy on them, that you hit the Fortnite dance. So yeah, that, that's the, the sussy, amogus Fortnite tech. But that's looking like all I got for today. Um, obviously, that tech is... Um, there's zero applause with it. It's not situational at all. Um, it's optimal for um, everything. And uh, I hit it every game, as are all of the techs in this video. They're all the immaculate, flawless techs. But I, I hope that some of this tech helped you in some way. I have more to come, so, you know, show me some support. And um, that's all I got for today. I'll have more shit up very soon. Thank you for watching.